Early life, Jace. Here come. You gonna see any games in before you go back? No, not if I can help it. You what? Soccer's all right, I suppose. I've got nothing against it. I've got nothing against knitting either. Just as long as nobody expects me to pay to watch it. Mac, are you listening to this? Hey. But you've got to make allowances, boxer. I mean, she is an Aussie, right? And proud of it. <laughs> Look, I know what I'm saying is probably blasphemous, but I think that soccer is embarrassing. Embarrassing? Yeah. All those grown men with permed hair, dancing up and down, waving their arms in the air every time the referee does something they don't happen to agree with. And then there's the snogging that goes on. I mean, right there on the field. Snogging? Yeah. What else can you call it when you see these blokes run half the length of the field to kiss one another? Just because somebody scored a goal. They'll be going on carrying handbags next. <laughs> no, we don't go in for that sort of thing in rugby, I can tell you. Oh, I see. You're a rugby fan then, are you? A rugby league, actually. That's the big game in Sydney. Yeah, well, trust us you'd have a game like that as this national sport, eh, Mac? We can play soccer, too, when the fancy takes us. Ah, oh, that's a laugh. Yeah, it was. Especially about a year ago when your Bobby Robson brought England over to play us. What was the scoreline again? 1-1? One, one? Yeah, it was 1-1, one, one, wasn't it? But uh, that was a fluke. Yeah, we thought we were robbed as well. Mac, are you just going to sit there and let her come out with this stuff? I mean, under your very roof. I've got to admit, boxer, I thought uh, she had a point there, actually. What? Well, I thought England were very lucky to get away with a draw there myself that day. Oh, I forgot. You're about as unbiased as she is, aren't you? I don't know what you mean. I thought Australia were lucky as well. Yeah, lucky? Yes, well, it was England that were playing. And not Scotland. Oh, you're gonna hit him or will I? Well, when you do, make sure you get him in the head. No way that's gonna do him any harm at all. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. I just, uh... Just a little bit of disillusioned, that's all. Why? Is that Mrs. Masters? When I met her for the first time, I took her for being straight as a die. I just don't understand how she could have gone along with selling her shares to somebody like Chalmers. Well, then again, Mac, perhaps she doesn't go along with it. What are you talking about now? Well, perhaps she doesn't even know that her shares are going to go to Chalmers. Why shouldn't she? Well, why should she? Unless Ronnie Wright has told her. And let's face it, he's hardly likely to do that, is he? Not if he thinks that there's a chance that, well, she could suddenly turn awkward with him about it. Do you know something? You might just have a point there, Boxer. Maybe she doesn't know. Or maybe she's not supposed to find out until it's too late. That's right. Thank you. I shall go and see what our beloved chairman has to think. Oh, Mac, you haven't forgotten you're picking my dad up at the airport at 12? I haven't forgotten. I shall be back in plenty of time. Just make sure that you are here, OK? Bye. Yeah, see you later, mate. Bye. Yes? Oh, Mr. Cassidy. I'm Barry Cassidy, yes. Mr. Chalmers asked me to give you this. Mr. Chalmers? Mr. Ivor Chalmers. Oh, oh, Ivor. Oh, yes. What does he want? Well, you could read it and find out. Right, leave it with me. He said to wait to hear what your reply was. Did he indeed? Well, why should Mr. Chalmers want to see me at the offices of Dunmore Town? Well, haven't you heard? There's a big noise down there now. Is he really? How interesting. Very interesting. Well, is there a reply or isn't there? Uh, yes, yes, you may inform him. I will endeavour to be there at the time arranged. If I can possibly rearrange my several other previous engagements. Right, we'll see you later then. Oh, take your time, would you? Yes, how was that thing today then, Jace? We're going shopping. Yeah. Oh, for glue. Records. Records? What do we use for bread, man? I'm broke at smithereens. They're freebies. What? Freebies. Mm -hmm. Free. Oh, 
help yourself. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, yeah right, right, yeah. It's big. <laughs> so maybe you're right. Maybe Mrs. Masters doesn't know what's going on. It really doesn't make a lot of difference, mate, does it? Why doesn't it? Not if she's already sold the shares to Ronnie. But has she actually signed the shares over yet? Well, I don't know. Surely that's the most important thing, isn't it? Oh, uh, sorry. Excuse me. I wonder if I might have a quick word, Mr. Jones. Not about desks, is it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, I, I do need to nip out for half an hour or so. I, I take it I can be spared. Not easily, Derek. As a matter of fact, I was about to do a bit of nipping out myself. It's no sweat. I shall look after the place for you. Oh. Oh, well, there you go, Derek. Off you go. Yeah. Mac will watch the shop for you. I mean, you never know, Derek, do you? It might just prove invaluable experience for me, eh? Hello, Judge. She must be here. Charlie, please. Charlotte, you have a visitor. Hi. Hi. Right, I'm off now, love. Look, are you sure you don't want me to get to the bank for you? Oh, oh stay here. Talk to your friend. Won't be long. Hi. All right. Look, it wasn't me who started the punch up, right? It was him. That. What do you mean? That's exactly what he said. Oh, yeah? Been hanging about again, then, has he? Actually, he called around to say we're sorry to Graham. What a creep. Which is far more than you've done, Judge Pryor. And as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing creepy about having a few manners, either. Here, hold up. She's coming in. Wait Stand here. That's rubbish, she said. You don't want to go spending your money on rubbish like that. What's it to you? Just trying to be helpful. Why? Don't you like people being helpful? <laughs> Regulars, are they? I've seen a couple of them before. Hi, Wurzel. Guess who? You coming out then? Uh, just off in the town, actually. I don't suppose, of course, you'll be going anywhere near a certain record shop. Who, <sighs> me? But I've been away for a couple of well, if you are, you're going to be the first to know about it, OK? Thanks a bunch. Yeah, I'll close the door and order. Well, yeah. I have an appointment with Mr. Charles. Managed to cancel them all then, did you? Cancel them? Those several previous engagements you had. Is Mr. Chalmers in? Thank you. Told you I would, didn't I? You speaking to me? Well, I ain't talking to our cat, am I? Told you I'd bring the Argonauts to see you. Argonauts? Yeah, Argonauts. I'm Jason, and these are me Argonauts. Good, eh? Yeah, terrific. In fact, I can't think why I'm not laughing. Probably because you're not supposed to. In fact, it's amazing what trouble you can get in, huh? Laughing in the wrong places. Look, do you want something? Only I'm busy, you know what I mean? Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, all right, watch it. You what? You heard. Should leave it. Look, I'm not scared of this kind of rubbish, girl. Yeah, who are you calling rubbish? You ain't gonna stand for that, are you, Jace? What do you think? Fancy your chances, then, sunshine? Any time, mate. And if you want to find out, just step outside. So who needs to step outside? Yeah. Who needs to step outside? Yeah. Who needs to step outside? Talk big, don't you? And there's half a dozen of you. Yeah, safety numbers, mate. That's my motto. Just a private punch-up, is it? Or can anybody join in? You can keep out of it and all. Oh, what's the matter? You don't like it now, do you? Now these odds have evened up a bit. Come on in, Jason! Hit him! Get him! Come on, Jason! Come on! Come on, Jason! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come
Ambulance, please. Going with her, are you, love? Yes, please. All right, show's over. Come on, move on. What's been going on then? Usual story, sir. A bunch of yobs started smashing up the shop. She got in the way and copped it. Right, I'd better go or I'm gonna miss his dad at the airport. Something must have happened, Mac. It must have. Oh, something's happened, all right. I know exactly what's happened. He's gone off with his mates and he's forgotten all about it. That's what's happened. Hi. Hi, uh, come in. Have you seen Boxer? Um, yeah, in fact, that's just what I come to tell you. Use Glossop. I am Sarge. Sarge? A sergeant. That's better. All right, outside. Now then, my constable tells me that you wanted a word with somebody in authority. Right. Yes, well, if it's a statement you want to make, you have to wait till your father gets here. Yeah, well, actually, it's him I want to tell you about. Oh, yes. Yeah, he's one of your lot. One of our lot? Yeah, a copper, just like you. Only, he's an inspector. So? Oh, so, I just thought I'd better mention it, that's all. I see. You weren't by any chance under the impression, I hope, that uh, being the son of one of our lot will gain you any special privileges? No, of course not. Oh, good. Because, of course, it won't. In fact, between you and me, when it is the son of one of our lot involved, we tend to go to some lengths to ensure that he doesn't get any privileged treatment, just in case anyone accuses us of favouritism. Just for the record, Glossop, I've been aware of the fact that you were Inspector Glossop's son ever since I spoke to him on the phone about ten minutes ago. Must say, he didn't seem all that thrilled about it. with her now, Mrs. Masters. We'll let you know how she is just as soon as he's examined her. Oh, thank you.
Now then, since inquiries into this incident have still not been completed, all three of you are bailed to appear here again tomorrow at 2 p.m. in the sum of 25 pounds. Do the parents agree to this arrangement? Yes. In that case, I must warn you, lads, that if you fail to answer to your bail, you'll be liable to be arrested and charged separately with that offence. I must also point out to your parents that if this should happen, you and your turn will be liable to forfeit the whole or part of that money. Is this also agreed and understood? Yes. In that case, if you just sign here for me, please. So. Of course, when I was a very young and green copper, I used to have all these very grand ideas about just what the future held for me. I used to think, I'm bright, got a bit of flair, I'm hardworking. There's no reason why I shouldn't go right to the top. Why, I even used to think I might end up as a chief constable one day. Or something big down in London. Glossop of the yard, the darling of the Sunday paper, the hammer of the underworld. There was just this one thing I never allowed for, you see. Just the one. What was that, Dad? Finding myself lumbered with somebody like you for a son. OK. Bye. What they say? Just said she's satisfactory, which is what they usually say when they're not very good. No, nah, that's all right. When they say satisfactory, that's what they mean, no more, no less. Look, Dad, I've known you've only just got back and all that, but would you mind if I went over there? I mean, to the hospital, see if I can find out any more? Well, they're not going to tell you any more over there than having a phone already, have they? Yeah, but we don't know that, do we, Dad? Not until we tried. Oh, all right. But how are you going to get there, though? I'll drop him off. I'll get the car. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Look, Dad, I'm dead sorry about all this happening. I mean, your first day back and all that. Yeah, me too, Billy. See you later. Bye. Bye. Girlfriend of his, is she this, uh, Charlie girl? I think he'd like her to be. Oh, I see. Yeah, just that she's still unconscious. Uh, Mrs. Master's with her now. Anybody sitting there? No, it's off, mate. Get a bit of roasting, did you, from the old man when you got him last night? No, well, he was more upset than anything, really. Why did you? He wasn't too pleased. Mm. Anyway, uh, thanks a lot for stepping in like that. It's all right. Shame about your team going out of the nick like that. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? I suppose you could always start following town, eh? You tell me something, right? If that had been you instead of us, would you start watching United then? Not said, I suppose. Yeah. What's all this then? Oh, it's just my resignation. Your resignation? Yes, as manager of this place. I take it that a week's notice will be sufficient. Presumably, if you can't fill the vacancy at the end of that time, well, Mac Murphy can always stand in. He doesn't appear to have much else to do around here at the moment. Finally recognise your enormous talent, so they, Derek, snapped you up for president of the World Bank? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Actually, Mr Jones, I'm going back into football, uh, but this time on a more satisfactory basis. Football? Where? Oh, right here. But this time we've done more town. You're joking? No, no, not at all. No. Apparently, for some time now, Town have been casting envious eyes on the sort of work I've been doing for United Supporters Club. Work, incidentally, for which I've never been paid. Now, Mr. Chalmers would like me to do a similar sort of job for Town, but uh, on a full-time professional basis. 
Ivor made me what I think is known in the business world as an offer I could not refuse. So, of course, I didn't. Well, of course, they do say, don't they, Derek? They're usually the first to leave a sinking ship. Hmm. The rats. I assume that the week's notice I've given will start right away. Look! Do us all a favour, will you, mate? Clear out now. Charlotte. Lovey. It's Gran. Charlotte. Mrs. Masters. I'm afraid you'll have to leave now. Sorry. Is she, Mrs. Masters? She's still unconscious. She's going to be all right. Why does it matter? Does anything matter to boys like you? Now look, Mrs. Masters. No, what... you look. It seems to me that you and your cronies are no more than thugs, mindless morons that go around starting trouble, smashing places up for the sheer joy of doing it. But all we tried to do is. No, I'm not interested in hearing any more of your excuses. It's in the hands of the police now. But just you keep away from my shop in future, do you understand? And even more important, when my granddaughter recovers, you keep away from her, do you hear? That is... Die. 